there, this is Greg Elwood, Editor-in-Chief of HitFix, and I am here with the director and the cast of Camp X-Ray, which premiered at the 2014 Sundance Film Festival uh, at noon today. Um, first of all, guys, can you please just uh, let me know what was your experience like? I know you've been to a number of premieres here. Um, did you sit through the audience, you know, just watching it? What did you guys think? Yeah, I, I have never seen the film yet, so it was my first time to see the film and to see it with a live audience. and. Uh, I gotta say I was really nervous before, but after I, I couldn't have been more proud of this cast, of the director, the film was incredible, and it received a standing ovation. It was just, it was mind blowing to me. And in fact, the standing ovation happened before the credits had even finished. People yeah. were already standing up. It was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you, having worked on this film for so long? Uh, it was very surreal. You know, I mean, it, it's you know, I think anytime you're working on something, you vacillate between trying to be humble and then also at the same time you have to lie to yourself and say that you're making the greatest film on earth you know it's like yeah. so you're always vacillating between those two things um, <laughs> and so there's a point where you're like yeah you know the movie's pretty good it's cool but um, I don't know it's very rewarding it's cool you know it's very cool to make you know a, a any piece of art that can affect an emotional reaction to something it's so cool I mean it's the most fascinating thing on earth you take an, an inanimate piece of, mm -hmm. of you know, picture and sound, and somehow that can bring someone to tears. It's like really cool. So like, it was really satisfying to hear people. I mean, not that I'm enjoy hearing people yeah. cry, but like, it's kind of cool. It's like, wow, they were really moved yeah. by the what was going on between these actors and just the raw, you know, energy and emotions that were happening there. It was odd to watch people giving a standing ovation as they're like sobbing. So yeah, it's a weird yeah, yeah. because the ending's kind of bittersweet. So it's a weird. It's like this celebratory thing, like yeah. wow. But at the same time, everyone's sort of like, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, because I think the movie just puts your head in a weird place at the end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Had you seen it yet before? Yeah, but this was the first time I haven't seen it. You know, I wasn't see, uh, able to see the film, but today I saw it with the audience. And what was? Is it hard? Uh, is it hard for you to watch yourself on screen? And actually, for all you guys as actors, is it hard to sit there and do you think of everything you yeah. wanted to do, or are you able to like escape and watch the rest of the film? Yeah, the best thing for me, I, I, I usually I was telling Peter that I, I try. I'm not. I'm not sure if I, you know, I, I'm always successful of doing this or not. But I try to see the story and follow the story and see the film, mm -hmm. not myself. Uh, for the second time, I'll go to this uh, theater to the, you know, watching the film for, you know, seeing myself and my job. But today, I, I saw the film and I enjoyed it very much. What about you? I have the opposite. The the first time I watch something, I I simply, mm. I know that I won't be able to watch anything by myself, so I don't try to force myself. I don't try to. I mean. I just go with it. Like I was literally with a fine tooth comb, like and and like with a blanket prepared to just like cover <laughs> by, by myself yeah, with a DVD. Really yeah, like, yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. Peter told me that he was like, well, I was in ADR, and he's like, Kristen, then call me back in like three weeks. I'm like freaking I out. I didn't even know how to talk to him. I was like, yeah. it's not. It wasn't. It was just that I could not get past certain things, and then today. Uh, I was really able to like have the experience and it was not, you know, sullied by all of the millions of things that could yeah. have been there, but more like really appreciating what was. And I loved it. I mean, it's I really a, think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge challenge because like, you know, making this movie, it's like every single person, you know, all of us, but also everyone, you know, from the DP and the editor, everyone was like, everyone was totally on board. It was just like a completely, completely and utterly committed to doing it. And when you invest, so much of yourself oh. in a project it's like and then you finally see it it's like there's this whole myriad of emotions that are going on i remember when i first saw like a rough cut i want to kill myself i'm just like oh my god what have you done and yeah. then you come back around and just like oh my god this is amazing I remember two that days later you're just like oh my god i hate this again it's just like there's so many feelings going on like i couldn't imagine and that's just me watching my own work yeah. i could not imagine what that's like to watch yourself it's, it's on the, screen it's the worst feeling i mean for me that was a two-hour film but it felt like 16 hours because every time <laughs> i'm on, every cringing i'm pulling out my neck it yeah. just i hate watching myself on film um, but I loved watching this movie, yeah, if that makes totally any sense. Normal. The idea of being responsible for depriving, you know, mm. not to sound too intense, but the world of something that mattered to you so much and, and like really, you know, you, you love so much and you're the one that killed it. And so it doesn't exist anymore. It only exists in your memory. Mm. It's mm. sickening. And, yeah, and, <laughs> it's and, horrible. And what's so great about this film is you know, you're tackling a subject that um, really hasn't been tackled before in, in this sort of dramatic vein. and. You know, there's a lot of ways you could have gone with it, and and I'm just curious, how did you convince Kristen and the whole cast here? Like, how did you convince them that this was the the right tone, the right story to tell about what's going on at Gitmo? 
Um, I guess it all really started with the script. I think it was, I feel like we could all see from that um, the approach that we wanted to take, which was very much more focused on the characters in that world and not just about being entirely about Guantanamo Bay. You know, we wanted to treat Gitmo as the backdrop to our story, not the story itself. Um, so I think just kind of the way it was reflected in the script, I feel like everyone could kind of sense that we were heading in that direction, that we were not going political, yeah. that we were just trying to tell a very human story um, that just is in this uh, a, a very personal, very simple, emotional connection between two characters that just happens to be set inside this insane, tumultuous, crazy place, you know? Well, one of the things I wanted to ask is, and since this was the first time you've seen it, and obviously now the second time you can see yourself out of it, you know, without giving too much away, there is a fantastic scene at the end of this film um, between your two characters. And I'm just curious, how, you know, did you rehearse it beforehand? Was it something that you worked out on, on the day of shooting? And what was that, shooting that scene like? It was insane. It was yeah. awful. <laughs> what, Peter did, what Peter did with us was, as he, 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 I think we did it, the whole thing chrono chronologically. We shot largely, it, right. their scenes we shot pretty much in order, and we, we built our schedule that way, you know, yeah. to really have... Which is very which rare. For, which, yeah, by the way, yeah. it was not a big schedule. I mean, he shot this film in 21 days. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 And, and that best. way, I think we, we, we got prepared for the final scene. And it, 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 it really worked just yeah. like that. Yeah. We didn't rehearse for, you know, the final scene. We that was read the one it. scene that we didn't rehearse. Yeah, yes. really. Yeah, we were... While table read, we, we, we saw, you know, everyone was emotion. It was you know, so yeah. there. And I got so scared at that table read because I was like, uh, uh, uh. And you Stop. told me. Yeah. Yeah, and you told me. Because you, you couldn't re-duplicate it, like, Yeah, you don't want to have that memory, just like, mm. yeah. you don't want to taint it. It's, you know, it needs to be... The way Kristen works, which is, I think, really good, it's like Kristen is very much just about, I think, trying to find a completely authentic moment, you know? Right. Um, I think that she's very much about trying to capture that lightning in a bottle, which is so great because, like, you can find those moments when you catch them, you're just like, damn, you, like, nailed that thing. It's like, we don't need to do any more takes. This is an interesting, I think that's through the process. So I could never do theater. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can only do, like, one good take of anything. You should try. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I buy that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> interesting oh, challenge. No, oh, I know okay. I want to, but yeah. Uh, and I, I just want to really uh, talk about each of your characters really quick, um, since you know a trailer for this probably won't be out for some time. You know, once you guys get you know picked up, uh, can you tell the audience like uh, who do you who do you play and and how you sort of relate to everyone here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I play Corporal Ransdell, and basically I oversee Getmo. I'm, I'm kind of the liaison for the for the noobs that come in for Kristen's character for Amy Cole and. Um, Basically, Payman loves me yeah, in this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, he's a perfectly I, stark yeah. contrast to who I, who, who my type of soldier. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, basically, I'm one of those guys that's been in the system so long. I'm desensitized mm. to all of this. Salty. And, yeah, it's he's just, salty. I love he's that. He's salty, and and uh, I mean, he's seen it all at Gitmo so much so that you know. It's worn, it's worn him down, and I really, I'm one of the people, I said this at the end of the film, that really believes that all these men are guilty and they should rot, they should rot yeah. there. They belong there, there's no hope for them, and I definitely don't give them any hope either, so. There's an interesting floral we set up where it's like, I wanted to do this thing where you have these two characters, and then right outside of it you have kind of, you know, on their respective sides of the war, what would happen if they go off the deep end to those extremes? And we have another detainee that's like violent and loud and really crazy aggressive. And it's like, you know, if Payman's character let himself slip and lost track of who he was as a human, he, he would devolve into this very angry, violent kind of monster. As would Cole. And the same yeah. side as with, with Kristen's character. It's like, if she was here long enough and let herself get jaded yeah. and kind of really, you know, crushed by this place, she would eventually turn into something more yeah. like um, Lane's character. Yeah. And one of the interesting things is your character, actually, I mean, I can see where you can, you would know where to, to, to find, you know, Christian and Lane's character, but where did you find, was it 421? Is that, what was the, his number? Oh, 471. 471. Yeah. Yeah. Where, oh, what, what, yeah. was, what was your inspiration for, for 471? Like, where, did you meet anyone? Did you talk to people who knew? I mean, yeah, I'm sure you're just going down and you know, um, getting on, like, talking to detainees. Uh, uh, <laughs> I guess, how did, did you talk to Did you talk to them? <laughs> Email that? <laughs> The NSA, um, like, I don't know. I always just wanted. It's. It was. I mean, like, this movie was 
extremely collaborative. I believe wholeheartedly in the collaborative process, especially in a film like this, where basically there is nothing to hide behind. It's it's the actors, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and we very consciously filmed it that way. And I was also very conscious not to like do a whole lot of like camera tricks and stuff and be just like, no, it's just. But it's like, shot so it is beautifully. beautifully. God, although we did play like, camera like, tricks, like, very classy. Yeah. You would leave the camera running when we didn't even know we were having conversations and just BSing on the set. Stuff that he would pick up while we were still in character and acting like our characters, and, he, and then he'd just yell "cut," and we turned and we wouldn't even know that he was running the camera. Yeah, because again, as a director, you want to extract the best out of everyone, and then just you know, the director needs to be a filter that shapes it, not creates it. I'm not creating the performances; I'm shaping them. You know what I mean? And um, like it was interesting in the beginning when I wrote um, Ali, I, I pictured him more as like a crackhead. You know, like the Noog Man from Miami Vice? That's a very obscure reference. <laughs> There's this like crackhead in Miami Vice. Okay, the and, movie or the TV series? Well, his character appears in both. But okay. He's, he's called the Noog Man in the first one, <laughs> in the TV series. Um, but anyway, it's just like this kind of like crazy like crackhead. I thought it was like a really cool character. And then, and to me, I always thought he was kind of stupid and just like, not stupid, but just like, this is kind stupid of weird. Stupid crackhead. Yeah, just yeah. like this weird. Because most like, crackheads are really <laughs> tough. <laughs> The crack well, we don't want to do community, right? <laughs> I'm just thinking like, you know, it was just fascinating to find like this guy who's totally weird, who's probably gone a little crazy, been locked up in there. Yeah. What was interesting is casting Payman, who has such an intelligence to him, he really tempered that and, and brought, I think, you know, it's, it's so, it would be so easy for that to go into vaudeville if you just like being the crazy detainee guy. Mm -hmm. And so Payman um, very much created and shaped that character in his own way, making him a lot more intelligent, and there's there's just so much more going on behind the eyes than just some outlandish kind of you know. Well, well, that was just my next question. Actually, is did you give him more of a backstory than what the audience is? Because I think the audience can can really relate to Lane's character, Lane and 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 to, um, Kristen's characters. But I'm just curious, did you did you in your own sort of back while you're doing all the scenes come up with, you know, maybe why had he gotten caught? Like why was Definitely, he? Definitely, yeah. That's what happens, you know, I think in every role that, uh, you know, you try to play. I mean, you have to write a history for yourself, a lot of questions about, you know, the backstory of these people. And yeah, so I asked, I, I brought, I, I think on FaceTime and Skype, I did two to three times with Peter with, I don't know, like, like 40, 50, mm. you know, questions. And he answered to, you know, most of those questions and some of them, you know, he left it by, by myself. He mm. said, you know, you can, you know, sculpt yourself. You know, you can make this character yourself. And yeah, definitely. I think what's really going to be interesting for the, for you guys who are here for a while, when you know, if you're here for a couple of days for the festivals, I think when you go out and you go and you meet people who see it, I think so many different people are going to think he was, he wasn't. You know, I think you're really going to. That raises really a really interesting to point. Like. At the beginning, because that's the big question, is like, is Ali guilty? Is he guilty? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. I originally, when we first met, yeah. I was like, hey man, I'm going to tell you this. Actually, I have secrets that, between both of these that no yeah, one I'm else like, knows. Yeah, I'm like, wait, are you actually <laughs> <laughs> Because he never told me this before. <laughs> no, yeah, no. We have a secret about your character. Here's character. We have a secret about your character that yeah. no one else knows. Okay. Oh, God. I just, oddly, I'm such a weird. I just got, like, chills. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's a big secret. Okay. It is. They're, they're, they're very influential. But the thing we started talking about, no one else, I was like, hey, man, we need to talk about his guilt. You and I are the only ones that can talk about this. And I said, it's this. And then Payment got back to me and he's like, no, it's not, it's this, and let me tell you why. And he changed my mind. Like, I had done the whole thing. He's like, no, this, he's this. And then Payment was like, do, Payman. he's wrong, and let me tell you exactly why. And I was like, Payment, you're absolutely right. That's the way it is now. I changed my mind a couple times about it. Did you? Mm -hmm. God, I was oh for like 12. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what if Peter is like, yeah, no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, I have one last question for you. For, um, you know, uh, uh, the movie I'm sure is going to get picked up and, and it's going to have a, a, a really Knock nice theatrical wood. release. Knock on wood, it will. Yeah. Um, what do you want audiences to see, you know, in this film in terms of, you know, something like Gitmo and Gitanamo? I mean, what what are you hoping that they will come away with when they walk away from seeing the film? Well, I don't have any, like, I never thought of this as a political movie at all, you know? I mean, I, I just hope people enjoy a, a piece of art as high-minded and pretentious as that sounds, you know? I think if anything, it, it, you know, I hope people come away with this notion of, you know, seeing themselves in the other, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like every day we go around and we see people and just like, that's a stranger, that's a stranger, that's a stranger, whether you're buying coffee from them or you're yelling at them because you're flipping them off on the four or five or whatever, it's like, you know, I think it's, there's something really magical when you can make that connection with someone else and they lower their guard and you see each other as humans and like, yeah. Yeah. And I love that connection, it's really yeah. magical. Even if you completely disagree with everything yeah. they are and stand yeah. for, you can still love them because yeah. you're both human. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like, what are you gonna, 
condemn anyone who is bored. It's like, yeah. It, I mean, that's like, the great message that's, in that's, this that's, film. Uh, you cannot sever. Like, there's there's yeah. some there's a connection between all of us that, like, you know, that's why we even make movies. That's why we're sitting here right now. That, that's why stories are awesome because you watch a story and like you experience something that some other author like. I love reading a book and you like you read something and you're just like, wow, I had the exact same thought. How on earth did someone else have that same oh, feeling and thought? Had, I've yeah. said those words. Like I have literally said that sentence. Yeah, and it blows before. your mind because you're like, just like, how the hell did you say that? Yeah. Because it, it, it tells you that you're not alone. It's yeah. just like, oh, wow, someone out there feels exactly the way I do. You know, and yeah. that it's like it makes you feel like not alone in this giant crazy world. Well, wars. congratulations because I think actually the reaction of the audience tells you that you know they feel the same way you do mm -hmm. about the story and about the characters you created. So also, it's really fascinating the setting itself. We, if you don't know much about it, it's yeah, like, you know, Gitmo, Guantanamo, we all know it. You know, the words are are you know familiar to us, but to see inside is just cool and weird mm. and unsettling yeah, it's and, to, and to see an unexpected yeah. side of it too like Not we're doing cool. yeah i mean like, yeah. oh no but I, it's yeah, fascinating yeah. in a dark you know what i mean it's, it's yeah. some of the weird the, the weird you don't have to look in there and we show you like a version and so yeah and the yeah. weird idiosyncrasies of that place are just strange and fascinating yeah the you details know, are so odd. one of the things that yeah the one of the thoughts i have on watching the movie actually was just like i can't believe we've forgotten this like you know it was like four years ago yeah. it was a big thing and everyone was sort of talking about it and now it's like Everyone's forgotten about it, and I think at least I know you don't want the movie to be political, but I'm hoping that if it well, at least gets people to think about not, this, has to be. It's not that with. it's not political; it's just not opinionated. It's mm, just, it's true. just, it's just honest. Yeah, right. it's just like and it's well research. Yeah, it's yeah. just reminding you, like, hey, it, it's not answering you the question; it's just reminding you that that question still exists. Yeah. 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 Well, um, Camp X-ray will be coming to theaters uh, near you sometime. I'm sure later this year. Go see it; it's fantastic. And thanks, guys, so much for coming. Thank, Thank you for having us.